Doing the right thing. Doing the right, what I call right. Um, which is not always easy to do. In Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 30, we find these words. I want you to listen up closely. Follow along in your Bibles if you'd like. But I want you to hear this passage. Very important passage for the Christmas season. And especially when talking about hope. It says, on the eighth day, in verse 21, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been even conceived. When the time for the purif his purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, and according to the Leviticus law in chapter 12, Joseph and Mary took him, that is Jesus, to Jerusalem, to present him to the Lord, just as it was written in the law of the Lord, that every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves and two young pigeons as a sacrifice. Verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. This is key, gang. The Holy Spirit was already doing his work. The Holy Spirit was already with us, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Christ of God, Jesus Verse 27 says, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. So the Spirit of God came upon him and said, Simeon. And Simeon said, yes, Lord. He said, come with me. Where are we going? To the temple. Okay. And so the Spirit spoke to Simeon. And the Spirit moved Simeon. And Simeon went into the temple courts, not knowing why he was going at this particular time. When the parents brought in, verse 20, the last part of 27, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Let me emphasize that. What the custom of the Lord required. Simeon took him, that is Jesus, in his arms and he praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people and is now on display. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. A child, the child's father and mother, mother marveled at what was said about this Jesus. This tends to be and a very important passage for all of us during the Christmas season. It also tends to be a little baffling that Mary and Joseph, who knew who this child was and knew who this Jesus was and were told, not only Mary was told, but also Joseph was told who this child would be, yet they marveled at the fact that Simeon recognized him, that Simeon knew him. That Simeon knew what he was all about. So when we look at our passage here in Luke chapter 2, we find Mary, we find Joseph, we find the baby Jesus, and we find this man named Simeon. Simeon, who had held out for the promise of God. A promise that God had made him a truth that one day would come, and the day would come where he would be able to see, he would look upon the Christ, the Savior of the world, before he would die. And he did. The Savior of mankind had came. The creator of creation was there. I don't think there's one story in all the Bible that describes such faithful focus such devotion or such hope as a believer in the promises of God like Simeon's story does here in Luke chapter 2. And it's, it, it, it's an important story 
It's amazing how many people don't even recognize the name Simeon when they, when they read the Christmas story or, or have never heard the name Simeon when the story of Christmas is read. But it's so key. It's so key for us here in 2021 as we approach 22. It is so important that we understand Simeon's story. See, because hope, as I was telling the, the little ones here a minute ago, is a confident expectation. It's being sure of what is to come. Knowing in your knower that you know that it's going to happen, that it's going to be with you, that it's going to be upon you, that you're going to be able to embrace it, that you're going to be able to touch it, that you're going to be able to see it, and that you're going to know in your knower that all the things you've known have come to pass. As John 17, 17 would tell us, the truth found in God is found in his word. And this babe, this babe of Bethlehem, he was the carrier of this truth. He is the word. So when we recognize the promises of God, and according to this story, we can, we will. We can actually see the promises of God come to fruition when the Spirit of the Lord is our guide, when the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Maybe that's what David meant in Psalms 119 when he said, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. That this Jesus would bring the kind of hope to help us face the future, to help us face the right kind of things. Because church, I can tell you this, all the right things that we think about aren't always the right things, especially when it comes to the holiday season. So if there's anyone here today feeling lost, feeling kind of empty, kind of off course, bewildered or adrift in this life, please hear the story of Simeon today and have a confidence that he did, that you can embrace the future by embracing the hope today see when jeremiah told us in 29 11 through 14 kind of to paraphrase a little bit he said for god knows the plans he has for us plans that would prosper us plans that would not harm us and plans to give us a hope for our future and right now that's what this world needs more than anything else i mean if we're going to be honest with ourselves after enduring the last year and a half, almost two years now, we need some hope. We have hope. We know hope. We've clung to hope. But sometimes I feel like hope is slipping through our fingers. So maybe we do need to be reminded once again that he has, that God has provided us a way forward. He has given us a hope to guide us. Or as Jeremiah would say, when we call upon him and pray, he will hear us. He will answer us. And I love this part in verse 14. And you will find him. It doesn't say he will find you. He already knows where you're at. He already knows what's going on. He's waiting for you to turn to him. He's waiting for you to look to him. He's waiting for you to see him in this crazy, chaotic world that we live in. Because he's there. He's right in front of us. And the spirit of the Lord quickens our spirit to know that he's there. To know that he's with us. To know that he's available for the toughest times of our life. You know, last week, I was looking over here to see if Jasmine was here. I didn't. I didn't see her. Oh, there she is right there. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Um, this young lady, if, if there was ever a person that probably le could let hope slip through her fingers, it would be Jasmine. Um, young lady, busted up, wheelchair bound now. But every time I saw her on Facebook, I saw that smile, that same smile. Last week... I saw that smile, and we, we talked. I, I apologize, I didn't see it till the end, but we did acknowledge it. But to me, Jasmine is the embodiment of hope. When everything around you seems like it's lost, it's gone, there is no hope, that hope is slipping through your fingers, I put on Facebook, and there's that smile. 
And when she got back to Farmington, what did she do? Gather all the little children of first steps around her. Why? Because it doesn't matter what happened to her body. It doesn't matter what happened to her legs. Because her faith and trust and belief is still in Jesus. Join me as we pray for Jasmine, as we continue to pray for her. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jasmine. And Lord, I'd be remiss if I didn't take time this morning to pray for her. I wish I would have taken time last week, but this, this worked right into today. I mean, if, if people want to know about hope, all they had to do is come over here and, and look at Jasmine's face. <laughs> Even as she climbs into her wheelchair, Lord, she has a hope in tomorrow, a hope that is not going to harm her, a hope that's going to be with her and give her a future. I thank you for Jasmine, and I pray you're anointed, your continual healing upon her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And Lord, I look forward to the day she comes walking into church, the wheelchair behind her. And so I ask your touch, your healing anointing upon her in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, girl. And you know I ain't passing you up without a kiss. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We have some beautiful people in this church, don't we? Sometimes, sometimes we overlook them. We overlook the beauty of what God is doing through them. And not just those in wheelchair. You know, I think of, I think of Ryan. I think of Hayden. <laughs> Celebrated his 18th birthday. How did he get so old and me so young? I, I know. That's exactly what I'm saying. Wow. See, the children shall lead. Amen. Maybe, maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe what we ought to do is, is get our eyes off of ourselves our situations, and put them back on the babe, back on the child, back on the Christ of Christmas. Question is, what are we hoping for? You sat around the tables of Thanksgiving, you gave thanks for the things that have happened. Have you given God thanks for what is to come? Have you given God thanks for what will be? Jeremiah says all we needed to do was ask. All we needed to do was call upon him and pray and he would answer. I think that's why James, that passage in James is such a kick in the face. You know when James says in chapter 4 verse 2, we don't have because we did not ask God. That's a hard passage to read. I wonder how many people have scratched that out in their Bibles. We don't have because we did not ask. That's a kick. So this morning, Colossians tells us in chapter 3, set our hearts and minds on the things above and not on earthly things. That's my prayer for all of us this Christmas season, is that we would not focus, and this is hard, we would not focus on the things around us, but we would focus on the babe, the babe of Bethlehem. So in our story, Mary and Joseph had Jesus with them. You know, this is what gets me. The angels told Mary and Joseph who this babe was going to be, what he was going to do, and because it was their child, he was always with them. Never would he leave them and never was he going to forsake them. Which is the same promise that he has given us. Yet they marveled. <laughs> they marveled at what Simeon had to say. I, really? I mean, and when I look at this and I put myself in Mary and Joseph's place, I, I prob they probably figured the same way I would. Well, it's just a baby right now. Someday he'll grow up and he'll become the savior of the world. But he's just a baby. 
And Simeon, he, he looks at the baby and, and he bows down. He humbles himself. He thanks God that he has seen the consolation of Israel. The hope for the Gentile world. For the whole world. And Mary and Joseph just look at each other. They obviously knew who he was. But the timing wasn't right. At least not for Mary and Joseph. How do we know this? Well, we know this from our passage. We know this because when we look at our passage, we see the things that Mary and Joseph did that were seemingly right, but not at the right time, not in the right way. See, our passage, we find this religious to-do list for all you Christmas fanatics out there, okay? Getting lights up decorating, growing endlessly. Fresh. Isn't it amazing how when you hang lights on your house, you get them up there, and then all of a sudden one section doesn't work? You know? You know, it was last year, not this year, because I didn't hang lights this year. I'm not allowed to. I had somebody else. But last year when I hung lights up, I didn't have enough, so I went back to the store to get another set of lights that looked identical to the ones I had. One was LED and one was not. So half my house lit up, and the other half was dull. And I did this, the thing that all mankind should do. I left them. I wasn't changing them. It took me forever to get them up. I ain't taking them down. That's just the way it is. But then we get caught up. And, you know, and Black Friday, online, the store, I mean, the shelves, a lot of stores were empty. Um, I mean, the, the number of people that have already went online and bought Christmas presents and and some of them are frustrated because they just didn't get the present they wanted to. Or they're praying, God, Lord in heaven, open up the passageways. Let them ships in so I can get my Christmas present. Don't act like you haven't thought that already. Well, I got you a really cool gift for Christmas, but you may not get it till Easter. But you're going to get it. So here's what you do. You do like Pastor Dave does. I print out a copy of what I'm giving them. Wrap it up in a box and give it to them. Yeah, it just one day, okay? It'll be, you'll get it. And then it'll really be a surprise. It'll be a surprise. But the thing is this. Every year we get to Christmas and we have these to-do lists. We even have religious to-do lists. Now listen to me. Please listen to me. Please hear me. Don't let procedures get in the way of the process of Jesus in your life. Don't let it get in. Look, look here. Doing the right thing is not always the right thing. Please hear this. We know what we need to do at Christmas time. We got to put a manger scene up so everybody knows that we worship Jesus. We got to light candles. We, gotta, we have to do all these things. These are important or it just isn't Christmas. Well, Mary and Joseph felt the same way. When we look at the passage, we see that Mary and Joseph were concerned with getting him circumcised. Got to get that done. On the eighth day, too. Got to make sure. We got to get purified. Mary can't go into the temple unless she's purified. We got to consecrate ourselves. We have to find these sacrificial offerings. We have to have these offerings with us when we come into the temple in keeping with the law, the Levitican law in chapter 12, which is required. It's expected of us. Mary and Joseph wanted to do the right thing at the right time and in the right place. But being in the right place at the right time, again, is not always the right thing. The list, the religious list required them to be in Jerusalem on the eighth day and for 40 days for Mary to be purified. The requirements or the to-do list told them if they do not do this right thing at the right place at the right time, then you're not right. I agree. In case you didn't understand what he said, he said, preach it, pastor, preach it. That's it. <laughs> I understand baby. I, you know, I understand baby. Um, <laughs> I 
Mary and Joseph got so caught up in the religious to-do list that they were surprised by Jesus. That they actually lost sight of who he was. They tried to put Jesus in their little box. Well, he's only a baby. Not possible. So we'll do all the religious things we need to do. We'll do all the things that are traditionally we're supposed to do. We'll do all these right things and then we'll be right before God. Far too often we spend our time following these rituals, these traditions, following the letter of the holiday law instead of following the Christ. The Christ of Christmas, the child of Christmas, the babe of Bethlehem. Notice in verse 25 what was different about Simeon and why he's in this story and what we need to focus on today, especially as we go into the Christmas season. Notice it was the Spirit of the Lord that was with him. It was the Spirit of the Lord that was upon him. It was the Spirit of the Lord that guided him to a place where his focus was on Jesus. I have a feeling, because the Bible doesn't mention it, and I always go by what the Word says, I have a feeling Simeon didn't walk into the temple and say, Mary, out! You didn't get the purification done yet. What are you doing in here? Mary, what are you doing here? You're not allowed in the temple at this time. And what are you doing here with the baby? Is it the eighth day? You sure it's not the seventh day? Simeon made none of these comments. Instead, he worshiped God. He praised God. Verse 26 says, It was the Spirit of the Lord that revealed this truth of God's promise to Simeon. Do you think that was the only baby brought that day? Do you think that was the only child that came to the temple that day? I'm sure there was a line of, of babies coming, of little children coming. But Simeon knew this one was different. Verse 27 says, The Spirit of the Lord moved Simeon towards the promise. Let me rephrase that. The Holy Spirit moved Simeon towards the Lord. Because he is the promise. He was the promise. You know, I, I, I got to tell you something. I hang on to this passage with all that's within me. When I'm with people who are passing. Or people are coming to the end of their days. Or tragedy has struck. My prayer is, Lord, do not let them pass from this earth without presenting yourself once again to them. May they know and their knower that they know what is right to pass from this life in righteousness. I mean, think about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 tells us the Spirit of God searches all things, even the deep things, and will teach us all things and remind us of all things, what is important and what is right with God. So, if doing the right things and being in the right places are not always the right thing, then what is right? Being of the right spirit at Christmas and throughout the year. Being of the right spirit, especially at Christmas. And you'll find the busyness of your to-do list, the frustration of not getting things done, the changing of one's temperament because it didn't work the way we wanted it to work by keeping our eyes set upon the reason for the season, keeping our hearts set upon the babe of Bethlehem, the child of Christmas, the Christ of Christmas, staying plugged in and connected to the source. That is our hope. This holiday season, don't forget Jesus. Mary and Joseph did. <laughs> Woo! 
I was feeling bad up until that point, Pastor Dave. So if Mary and Joseph messed up, I guess I'll be all right. Yes, you'll be all right. If you just stay connected to the promise hope for today, for tomorrow, and every day after it. 2022 does not have to be a source of dread. Christmas does not have to be a source of frustration. The holidays can be a season of holiness unto the Lord. And church, that's the right thing. As our praise and worship team makes their way back to the platform, I'm reminded of a couple passages in Galatians chapter 5, 25. It tells us that we are to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Notice it didn't say run after him. Notice it didn't say run with him. It simply says keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Because he is living, he is active, he is available, and he is our living hope in this world. Just as Jesus said in John 14, the Holy Spirit, whom my Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He will guard, he will guide you in all things. And he will remind you of everything that has been said today in this service from his word. As we stand back to our feet again, Kind of a simple question with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And then we're going to sing about this living hope again. Because Emmanuel loves them high notes. The thing I love about Emmanuel is he don't care about the notes. He only cares about his, his God. Maybe that's why Paul said gongs and cymbals. Maybe that's why Paul reminds us about not making noise, but a joyful noise unto the Lord. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I ask you this question, simple question. Do you find yourself already distracted in this life? Do you find yourself already distracted by the things in our world? Do you already find yourself distracted and, and, and bordering on frustration with Christmas? If that's you, would you just slip your hand up and down today? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jesus Christ, our living hope. Ladies.